Will I ever get married? Should we move in together? How can I focus on God while dating? Why do I feel so alone? Are looks really that important? Is sex really such a big deal? You may have a lot of questions about your walk with God. So let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to another Lamore in Christ video. You see that there are two of us here today because we asked you guys, do you have any questions for us? And you said yes. You said I have a lot of questions for you. So today, why are you laughing? Yes, okay. they said that. <laughs> so today we're gonna sit down and answer those for you. We're in the car because we have dropped our daughter off at his parents' house. So we're like, how do we get this done efficiently? So that's what we're doing right now. It's just really awesome to have people who are engaged, engaged in the content, not <laughs> engaged, but like engaged in the content and wanting to know more because our testimony is so important to us and what God has done through our lives. We would not have this story if it wasn't for Jesus. So we're grateful to him. For First and foremost, you know, to God be the glory, to God be the thanks, everything like that. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the questions. We're going to take turns reading them, so you can okay. read it first. This question comes from Corona TV. What did you guys set as your boundaries? There are people's testimonies that I've heard of that they literally didn't kiss, hold hands, do anything before marriage. And I used to think like, okay, that's kind of extreme, but that's their story. That's what they felt led to do. Touching and intimacy and kissing, things like that, all of that is foreplay for sex. And you may not agree with that, but I do believe because I've experienced, you know, you're just like, oh my gosh, like, like I'm kissing and now I'm thinking about all this other stuff. Like you can't tell me that don't happen to you. That's what makes me kind of think maybe we should have just been like, I'm not gonna be sitting on his lap. We're not gonna be making out. We're not gonna be doing this and that beforehand. But in our culture, everything is so like, it's cool if you have sex, you probably should. You probably should move in together, have sex and do everything. So you know they're the right person. But because we asked God for signs to tell us who our future spouse would be, that's how we knew like, if they're gonna be the one, then God has us He's going to help us to be compatible in every area. We don't have to test it out. But yeah. like I said, you're not wanting to have foreplay involved in a relationship where abstinence or celibacy, purity, virtue, those things are important to you because you are just setting yourself up. If I were to advise someone like my daughter, you know, in the future, I'd be like, maybe hold hands, you know, maybe hug. But anything else i would say just don't do it <laughs> like you can wait till you're married you have the rest of your life to be doing all these things so the next question is from ashley cadet it is can you speak on healing from a broken heart or relationship so as my husband shared before in his purity story he never had a relationship but i have had boyfriends in the past i never really necessarily had my heart broken but i have definitely had relationships where when i let them go it was really hard for me you're putting so much time and effort and energy into this relationship but if it doesn't work out you're just kind of like what was that all about and how come i'm thinking about them all the time or how do i even let go of that so i think the main thing for me about letting go i just literally ask god please get basically get this away from me get this off of me any kind of attachment that i have to them some people call it soul ties and some people have even said soul ties are only when you have sex i don't agree with that i think that soul ties are building intimacy with people because i've never had sex before my husband but there was definitely people in my life where i just felt like this intense connection with them ask the lord to help you to train your mind that if you are thinking about them or if you are missing them it's just like redirect your thoughts redirect those patterns to praying and like god thank you you know for that you do have a husband for me that maybe this wasn't the one or you do have a wife for me maybe this wasn't the one but i submit myself to you just surrendering your life and keeping god the priority everything else is going to fall into place you just have to really focus your mind on what god wants you to do what is your work what is your ministry what is your family relationships like what how are you preparing yourself to be the right spouse and everything else is not even going to seem that important anymore and over time if you purposely do these things i believe that is going to help you cassandra archer how do you guys work through arguments especially in the first year of marriage <laughs> short answer horribly but you can expand on that better now 
Um, but yeah, in the first year, I mean, you can equate it to like boot camp or some kind of trial by fire. In a marriage, in any kind of relationship, you bring into it your own ways of communication. And when you get married, even if you guys are together for a long time, there'll be a headbutting period if you come from different backgrounds, especially. But we never really knew initially how to address that until years later. And we had like counseling with um, a seminar we went through and, and different things that helped kind of figure out what was a big part of those arguments and those problems and I think if you can just sit down with each other and identify why things are making you feel that way early on and understanding it based on like what your history is like mm -hmm. what your communication with your parents was what your siblings and all that stuff because all that plays into it um, and you can kind of analyze that beforehand before you start flying off the handle at each other later because mm -hmm. you don't understand why you guys are clashing in that way but that's a really good question yeah and I like the program he was talking about that we went through this was after five years of marriage we went through a program called couple talk it's a Christian based um, program to help couples to communicate better and we could have used that before <laughs> marriage so I think that's um, important is just like being on the same page figuring out how to do that quickly especially in your first years because mm -hmm. ours was not easy a lot of people <clears throat> say like oh newlywed stage is so great and then it gets harder for us it's literally been like from the beginning it was kind of hard and it progressively got better so we're at like the best part of our marriage after you know almost nine years later I would say that it just keeps getting better for us but <laughs> we did go through a lot in our first several years that got us to like okay we we gonna be together we gonna make it through if we can make it through all of these other things we gonna be all right so we just kind of cling to the Lord and cling to each other stay prayerful um, stay humble and respectful and honoring each other and kisses and kisses <laughs> um, actually, I did want to add one quick thing. Um, conflict isn't bad. Conflict mm -hmm. is something that you're going to face. Before I got married, I was like, well, we'll never have fights or we'll never have conflict. And it's like conflict is, is good. <laughs> How you work through it is shows the the actual, the true metal or the, um, the strength of that relationship. SDP says, when you spoke about having a knowing that your husband was coming, did you ask God for confirmation? I might be in the same boat and I don't know what else to do besides pray. Yes, I actually have a video called How I Knew My Husband Was The One and it tells you all about from meeting him to knowing he was my husband, getting married, all of that. And I did ask for confirmation. I asked for God to show me a specific scripture three times. And I saw that same scripture three times within a matter of a week. And I was like, okay, Jesus, even the day I prayed that, that night, I saw the scripture at a, Bible, at a small group. So I was like, okay, that's the first one. We'll see if there's more. So yes, within a week, I got confirmation that he was my husband. And I was just like, okay, I guess this is the thing. I guess we're doing this. If you ask for that, um, don't wait like a year and be like, well, I'll get a sign eventually. Like it, when God confirms things, he does usually answer very, very quickly. Amber Kitchell asks, I'm not a mother, but I think it's important to hear some advice on raising kids for the future. And I was wondering how you discipline your child if they do wrong. I know the Bible, in the Bible, there were some where, where it says, spare the rod and spoil the child. But overall, without hitting kids, how do you get them to obey? We wanted to kind of refrain from that and see if we could just speak to her and have her obey through having timeouts or having consequences without it being physical the various stages is so different like when they're really young and it's like you tell them no sometimes they didn't until they get to an age of, of really cognitive thought and reasoning they don't understand that once they can reason with you um, having consequences like hey if you don't listen for this and listen to us then we'll take away this or you have a timeout for mm -hmm. that reason and, and it's important to really be um, consistent. When she turned a certain age, you know, our parents were kind of like, oh, this is the time you can spank. It doesn't have to be crazy. You're not trying to kill them, but like they need to have consequences. So we did spank for a, like a few months, I think. A, a lot of people will say you need to calm down first, then you spank, then you do this. But in the heat of the moment, I was just like, no, you did something like you're getting spanked. And it was always just like in anger. I would hit her and I just never felt okay with that for me. So I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. 
I already didn't want to do that and I kind of felt like that was a conviction that God put on my heart and I was like God I'm sorry that I did this and it wasn't even working with Petra it was just kind of like she started being a little more physical and violent and angry and I was like this ain't even helping nobody so I'm not about to traumatize myself or anybody to do that so we did the timeout method and that really works for us and it's progressively gotten so much better with her having that consequence instead but we do know people who do spank and it's worked great you know in their family and their kid is very repentant and and I feel like if God has definitely put that on you not to hit he will give you the means so the next one is um, water break, water break. <laughs> So this one is a little bit longer, but I'll read the part that has the question. Kelly Johnson says, I'm ready to start dating with intention, but I'm curious if you have any advice on how to know if the person you like is ready to date to get married. How can you tell? Does the Bible say this is how you know you found your husband? How will the Lord reveal that? So in our stories, I think it would be great for you to watch him. He has how I knew my wife was the one. I have one how I knew my husband was the one. I don't believe in dating at all until you have found someone who is like, hey, you know what? I like you, I want to pursue you for marriage. I believe it is a man's position to do the pursuing and we're there to be ready, to be waiting, to be living our life, you know, in a God-centered way. If a guy likes you, he will tell you he likes you. If he wanna be with you forever, he will tell you that. So I will say that just even in the world, they'll just be like, I like you, I want you, I wanna be with you. Once that person does come, if a person comes and they're serious, that's when you pray, God, is this my husband? Like, I need you to send me a sign, I need an answer. I need to feel peace about it versus getting ahead of yourself and saying I want to date with intention how do I find a guy who's ready for that God will show you and he will preserve you until it's time eat eat <laughs> I don't have anything to add I think you said everything I would have said okay this is from love dove how many kids do you two want does God bless marriage if both people save themselves for marriage what are your favorite verses about relationships and marriage do you guys study the Bible together you got all those questions. You were like, I'm going to get all my questions today. <laughs> Rapid fire round. We always talked about two kids. Naturally, at least, it would be a boy and a girl. Two biological kids. And we always wanted to adopt at least one, maybe more. In terms of does God bless marriage if both um, parties save themselves from marriage? Nobody's perfect, but whenever you have the ability to achieve God's best plan up mm -hmm. here, versus something that's like not in his best this is going to be a better experience than this and these can still be blessed right as long as you're walking with the lord but mm -hmm. if you had a choice you would want to experience the best marriage is an institution that god created you'll see more fruit and more positivity and maybe even more blessings when you do it god's way and especially if it's two people a husband and wife who are like we're committed to being married the way God wants us to be married and submitting this covenant to the Lord, asking for his blessing. But no, God doesn't have like, oh, y'all are going to be super blessed because we could save ourselves for marriage and then go crazy and then just be like, oh, we're wilding out now. Now that we're married, we're, we're doing all kinds of stuff. Like it's more about your obedience and respect for the covenant of marriage and doing it God's way once you are married. So. Mm -hmm. So the other two are, what are your favorite verses about relationships and marriage? Um, I'm going to put these on the screen because I'm paraphrasing, but definitely, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. And there's one that says, rejoice in the fountain of your youth and may you be satisfied always basically with your own wife. And I think it even says, may her breast satisfy you always, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, intimacy, sex is just a part of marriage. It's a great part of marriage. Do not awaken love before it so desires. Basically don't put yourself out there early when you're really not ready for like what God has called love and marriage and relationship to be. This is why a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined together with his wife. And that's just such a awesome visual for what that means to be husband and wife, that you are like creating a whole new thing, a whole new legacy basically as you guys come together. And I just think that that's an awesome visual. But like I said, I'll put them on the screen because I, I am paraphrasing and probably forgetting some of the words that are in the scripture, but that's what's off the top of my head. And then do we study the Bible together? I think that was the last one. Bible and prayer is a very important part of our marriage. And in the mornings, we both do our own, you know, reading and praying. And then that before we go to bed, that's when we come together and our daughter's with us too. And we'll read the Bible, pray, and then go to sleep because we want it to be the last thing we think about before we go to sleep and then the first thing we think about when 
we wake up kind of a thing. This is from Jonathan Hutchinson and he says, beware, this is a paragraph. Basically, he's talking about having insecurity problems as a young single man. Oh yeah, and also he doesn't have any female friends and do you think, does he think God is shielding him from toxic relationships? So yeah, insecurities, how does he gain confidence and like, why do you think he doesn't have any female people around him? It's quite possible that God is shielding you because I do feel like he did that with me. In, in my walk, I was interested in girls. Usually with the ones that I was interested in in school had mutual feelings and it, there was kind of like, oh, we, we get along and I know that they like me and I like them. However, <laughs> nothing ever happened. There was no relationship that ever sparked. But I was like, is something wrong with me, God? because I can never have a relationship. Everything is clearer when you look back at life and you can say, well, okay, I see that relationship didn't work out. I'm glad that it didn't because I'm with who I'm with now and mm -hmm. it was worth the wait. Typically I found solace and peace and comfort in, in God, in my relationship with him first and in the gifts and talents and the ministries that he gave me, I was pretty much invested in that being my main focus. The priorities of God being the focus, if you keep your eyes on Him, mm -hmm. then all the other things will, will come in their proper time when, when you're ready and when the timing is right. Yeah, and I think dealing with insecurities, because you did mention about, you know, people saying things to you and you wondering why do those things stick with you and I guess bring out a lot of insecurities. My self-esteem was super low. Like, I hardly had friends. I was super shy, very insecure. And it wasn't until I uh, moved back, I moved to, I moved <laughs> to my mom's house um, with her and my stepdad in Hawaii that she was able to just give me that emotional support that I really needed so that I could know like, hey, I'm not a loser. I am cool, kind of. Like, I have talents, I have gifts, and just focusing on community and having the right friendships, the right community. And if I were you, um, if you can't get out, you know, side of your house or if there's no one there, that is building you up like ask God to send you the right people whether it's through church a small group school just getting plugged in where people are gonna build you up and say hey you're really good at this or hey I love your jokes you're super funny or like I like the way you skateboard I don't know anything about your life but like there's there are obviously things gifts and talents and things that God has given you that do set you apart in a good way and he has someone for you and I am glad that you've decided that you want to pursue the things of God and get his best for you but that that really is like Jarrell was saying focus on your path with God focus on what he says about his creation he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that he knit you together in your mother's womb he created you for a reason so keep speaking those things over yourself and as you grow up and you'll be an adult and doing your own stuff so it's not like you're always going to be around people who demean you but you have to be praying for like god please send me the right type of people that are going to add to my life please help me because i'm dealing with insecurities and i'm um, just diving into the word staying prayerful and i think those things could really really help you renita g how did you build your future during your single season i'm currently working on establishing a solid foundation for my future both in my career as well as god's kingdom do you have any tips or strategies that helped you during this time so first of all renita that's awesome that you're doing that that is what you should be doing while you're single um, a lot of people think that being single is basically waiting for your husband but it's not being single is dedicating your life to god before you get married and once you get married you're still dedicating your life to him you just happen to be married too and having someone who can go and build that ministry purpose you know in your life just a snapshot of what my life was like before I met my husband this is even before I felt he was on the way this is why I think God was preparing me for it because I didn't feel like my husband was on the way until I kind of got through these things so after I was out of high school I was like I'm gonna go to college and then I ended up going to school for television production and I was just really focused on like my life my goals my job getting trained I guess for the field of television production and movies and things like that so I was just really focused on like these are the things I love to do and I'm just kind of gonna let this guide me and from that I ended up in front of the camera doing modeling and things like that and then once I was was done with my degree I remember praying to God and saying hey if you want me to continue school everybody's saying get a business degree because you can use it anywhere for any job if you want me to do this you'll have to provide the resources and I did talk about this in my um, when God changes your dreams video I was like God if you want to want me to do this you provide away he didn't so I was like I guess I'm done but what I started focusing on more was I just felt like this 
empty spot in my life where I needed a church community. I needed Christian people around me who were going to hold me accountable and so into my life. So I'm like, I'm getting involved in church. I have a small group. And then something God put on my heart, which is basically the beginning of Lamore in Christ in another phase is he had me to start writing my testimonies on a blog. It's just my Kaitia Lamore blog, this old, 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 old stuff. If you go to KaitiaLamore.com and go way back in the blogs, you'll see some of my first testimonies. And I started writing basically how God is moving in my life and people would see me at church like, hey, I read your blog. I really spoke to me. Oh, I, the one about confirmation, like that was great. And I was like, people actually care. This is helping people. So I was just like, God, I want to start doing whatever you need me to do. And I even started YouTube at this time. And I'm going to talk more about that whole thing. But I started YouTube during that time just for fun. I didn't really, I don't use that channel anymore. But it was like a great preview of what was to come basically. Now I'm doing Lamore in Christ. I'm blogging. I'm doing videos. I'm on YouTube. I was kind of building my identity, I guess, so that I didn't lose myself in a marriage or in motherhood. But I want to be Kaitia. I want to be who God created me to be first. And then my other roles and hats that I put on fall into that. But I would just say what you're doing right now is great. And that's how you're going to set up that right foundation because I think he's just wanting you to be like, this is who I need you to be. Become that first and be loyal and dedicated and surrender every area of your life to me and I will supply all of these things even in the Bible it says seek his kingdom first and his righteousness and everything that you need basically is going to be added to you so that's something that you just need to keep doing and he'll provide all the rest Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh this one is for you though oh there's two of them okay so I'll read the Kaitia one and you can read the Jarrah one so this is from Miriam Seget I think is how you pronounce your last name so what can a young woman pursuing God do to establish herself as an individual and in her career? And what are your views on self-love in the perspective of a woman? So I kind of just answered the one about establishing yourself and your career and everything. And my views on self-love in the perspective of a woman, regardless of male or female, it is seeing yourself as God sees you. And I, as I said before, I had issues with that with having a lot of insecurities and doubts and am I good enough? Why don't people like me? How come I don't got no friends? And then it was my mom really helped me in building up my self-esteem and then I could see like, hey, I do have value and worth. But even after I moved out and got married and moved all the way to LA, it was almost like starting over. Like, I don't have any friends. <laughs> Nobody's hiring me. Like, it just felt like rejection, rejection. I had my husband, which is great, but you're still in the first year figuring out how do I talk to him and how do we, you know, relate? And we're just trying to get through all these hurdles that's been thrown at us the first year. Self-love to me means spending time with God because he's going to fill me up. He's going to be where my source is, my source of strength and love and peace. I had to continue to focus on God to know that I was where I needed to be and like, okay, God, if this is my life season, how do I, how do I work in the right relationships and how do I how to I serve you? <laughs> how to I? <laughs> and how do I serve you? What does that look like? And just having to put him first so that my worth doesn't come from anybody else but him. Like Jarrell's views about me and his affection and support adds tremendously. My family, my mom, even my daughters love it adds tremendously. But at the end of the day, I have to know that my my God who created me, who created the heavens and the earth, he thought I was important enough to send me down here and give me a purpose and a calling. My biggest form of self-love is just like dedicating my life to the Father and knowing how he views me and how precious I am to him. The question for me, for Miriam, during your dating season with Kaitia, how did you establish the physical boundaries? Because in our modern day society, physical intimacy is the big difference between a couple, mm -hmm. being a couple and being friends. I would like your view on this from both of you as a Christian couple. Churches that like support courting, usually it's more of a group atmosphere. It's like, hey, everybody goes out together. It's mm -hmm. not so intimate one-on-one -on -one because it's, you're limiting opportunities for temptation to overtake you. And that's what you want to do is, I mean, this is as a couple, this is as being single, mm -hmm. this is as, even as a married couple, you want to minimize the opportunities that can cause trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't, like, temptation is all around you, so you don't have to feed into it. So minimizing opportunities where temptation can thrive. Something that 
is great about your question and I think something that God just kind of revealed to me now is in this modern society physical intimacy is a big difference between a couple and friends that is what the world says but when you think about it even on paper if somebody's asking you are you single married or divorced there's no are you dating are you a couple are you engaged it's like you are single until you are married and then you are divorced you know if you were married and are no longer you don't have to show and display intimacy to be like this is my boyfriend because we kiss because we hold hands because we hug and i sit on his lap it's like this is my future husband we're courting we're dating we're engaged because we chose we're going to be married that's what sets us apart is we committed to one another that we're going to be together for the rest of our lives but even until you are actually married you should still function not as a single person in the sense that you don't care about them but it's still like until you're married you're still legally single and you still focus on god what is it that you need me to do until i am married how do i work towards marriage you know building communication and a relationship but all the hugging making out all that stuff that doesn't make you belong to one another and that's why i feel like it's important to say we are going to get married that's why we're together we didn't date and have any titles until god told us that is your husband that is your wife so that is all I had to say about that. So the next one was from Jinx Bryant 27. Was it hard being celibate? Ever since I was young, I always wanted to save my virginity to give to my husband. So when I heard other people like, oh, like me and my boyfriend in middle school, you guys, like one of my best friends, she's like, oh, me and my boyfriend did this. And I was like, I don't really know what to say because I'm not happy for you, but I don't want to seem like I'm judging you. So for me, it was more just like, the loneliness aspect, it wasn't that I wanted to go ahead and do it because I, I never saw a good example that made me even want to do that. But I think it was just like not having a, a boyfriend or having not being in a couple, it just made me feel kind of isolated and lonely because it's like, I want to have a date, I want to hold hands, and but it wasn't worth it to do all the other stuff, I guess. So I never really wanted to not be celibate or abstinent. Once you make up that decision in your mind, it's just like, this is just my life. My reality is I am a woman this is my name and i'm abstinent like it just becomes a part of you i guess if that makes sense <laughs> yeah i mean for me it's similar um it's you make a commitment to something and then you're committed to it <laughs> so it's it's like if you don't even consider it as an option yeah then it's it's not really that tempting or appealing to you because you've already made up your mind uh, for me it was similar with like drinking alcohol and mm -hmm. Like I've never had alcohol. I never alcohol. I, I never had drinking alcohol. <laughs> so it's not even tempting to me to drink it. There's plenty of people who are like, I need this for this and this reason. So I think a lot of people having sex outside of marriage, getting drunk, getting high, doing things that are sinning against their own body, it is a thing where you're most likely substituting for something you need from God because mm -hmm. he will be your portion he will help you you know with all these and he will even provide a way out if you have walked right into temptation he'll say here here's an exit here's a way out like come with me but if you're really really like this is so hard you know I had sex before and I really want it it's most likely like I need a fix I need someone to help me so that I can feel better about whatever you know is going on in your life so I would say if you if it's really hard for you being celibate it is a thing where you just have to be like God where are the holes at where are the cracks that need to be filled up because I don't want to use anything whether it's food or anything to become like a, my medicine <laughs> so I can fix myself when you just need God to do it well for me I guess I was exposed to porn at an early age so that kind of skews your perspective on things so I always knew that I was gonna wait till marriage but then when you have a hyper sexualized culture mm -hmm. that's always putting that in your face that puts unhealthy standards and expectations and timelines that we're never meant to have or be exposed to at an early age so that was the only thing that made it difficult and it was never like oh try to act this out with a person but it always kind of put ideas in my head where it was like this I don't want this yet and I'm not ready for this yet but it was just always around mm -hmm. um, so that was the only factor that if you can avoid that that will help you in your walk more people are being abstinent than you think yeah word next one my Naya Phillips, have you ever come across a time in your life when you felt that you were stuck? You didn't feel like you were on the right path to your calling. How do you take the first step to get to your calling? Well, I felt like from a young child, I kind of knew that I was going to be in the field that I am in the arts and in creative. 
I think I struggled through like college to figure out how that was going to be. Like, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be an artist? And how do that, those things fit together? And so that was the only time where I was like figuring out what's the um, application for those two things and how they would be brought together. And God kind of revealed that in college. A lot of times people don't realize the calling that they have. Just because you do something well doesn't mean that's necessarily your calling. Your calling typically would be something that you do well, but that you're passionate about as well. Like oftentimes people say, well, you do it for free. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's kind point. of a, um, something that is true, but you shouldn't have to. <laughs> like yeah. God will, will provide for you to be able to thrive and be successful in the, the field that he called you to be in. Um, so if you don't know it yet, um, just submit it to God and he'll reveal it. He is our provider. Mm -hmm. He's going to provide you the means to be successful in that in that industry, in that realm, in that career, in that ministry, whatever it is. Yeah, and I think um, those are really good points, you know, about what does it mean to have a calling? How do you even know what it is? And I think for us feeling stuck, that's something we've gone through even within the past two or three years where sometimes God will tell you, okay, you're going to be in the arts or you're going to be a performer, you're going to be an accountant, whatever it is. And for me, what I've done in the past is like, oh, that's what you want me to do? Okay, well, let me figure out how to make that happen. And both of us had that where it's like, okay, we're married now. We got bills to pay, like, and you just hit the ground running and you're like, I'm grinding, I'm hustling, I'm trying to do everything. But we were doing it all in our own strength. So it was going nowhere fast. And we're like, we're stressed out. We're getting sick. This can't be the way, you know, and we're barely, you know, getting by. So we had to just stop and say, okay, God, you know what? Before we just, <laughs> make a bigger deeper hole for ourselves we're just gonna stop everything and say what do you need us to do and a lot of it was just we were taking on too much we were saying yes to too many things we had the wrong people in our lives and we weren't devoting to the right relationships that God has for us like even in our own family so it became a thing where we just had to get right with God. And as we were being still and getting rid of a lot of distractions, then we were able to see, oh my gosh, like how are we so blinded? Like we should have never been a part of this or we should have never had this person around or we should have never tried to do this career this way. And then that's why now it's like, okay, now focus on these things. And that's why I'm on this channel more and just spreading the gospel more and just like, God, I know that first and foremost, I am your child and I need to evangelize and tell people about you. How do I do that? If that's happening with you you just need to just stop reanalyze everything and just like I resurrender my life to you and whatever you need me to do I'm going to do it please make it clear and he will start to you know tell you and give you instructions so that you can move forward and he will tell you what is the first step because it may be something you didn't think of like hey work on these relationships and you're like how does that put money in the bank <laughs> working on these relationships and he's just like you'll see <laughs> you'll see why and then you're just like oh perfect like yeah because that's a priority like duh so it's it is just a thing where personally in your walk with god you you just have to know his voice and you need to be reading the bible you need to be praying every day and you need to be immersing yourself you know in the things of god and praise and worship music sermons devotionals books like all of that just all the time that we you know spend on social media watching our favorite movies and stuff if we really just turn that around and said god i want all of you all the time imagine what that could do to your life it's life-changing Amen. It, <laughs> it is i don't have anything else okay uh, this person has three questions oh three questions okay so the first one is what was your prayer life like while waiting for your husband this is from this is Na from naomi masillon definitely not as dedicated or consistent as it is now um, but definitely I had a walk with God. I was heavily involved in church and small group and being prayerful, asking for God's direction and just making sure that I was constantly surrounding myself with his word. And that's how I developed a close relationship to know like, oh, my husband's on the way. Oh, this is what I should be doing in my career. Oh, this is the church that I go to. So I would say just it was not I don't know if it was even every day, honestly until you know we started a relationship and we're married but it was definitely consistent because i was like i want to read the bible but sometimes it's boring but then it's like we'll read it like this and 
read things that apply to your life now so you can actually act on it, things like that. What are the ways you keep each other feeling pursued? This happened recently within the past year. We were um, trying to just have our relationship go to the next level, which is kind of weird to say when you're married, like what does that mean? But I think through parenting, through career, you kind of lose sight of what may be important to the other person. So I literally made a list and I was like, these are the things that make me feel the most love. These are things I need right now. And if you have a list of things that'll help you, like you send that list to me. So it's basically like in writing, things that he needs from me to do or to not do are ways that I can show him like, hey, I, I love you, I care about you, I wanna be around you every single day, I want a future with you, and it's not even a given. It's not a given that people are gonna stay with you. If you treat them like trash, psh, I wouldn't stay, I just wouldn't. And I don't really like fight for, you know, divorce and separation or whatever, but I'm just like, you shouldn't be in a miserable, horrible, and you know, even deadly marriage with someone who's not even trying, you know, to, to treat you right and do the, the things the way the Lord wants to. So even in our marriage, it's like, yes, we're committed to God, but honestly, you know, if this is just gonna go where I just don't feel appreciated and you're not taking care of me or like anything, if it just goes down this weird way, it's like, we need to reestablish everything and kind of set a new foundation because I want a different marriage. I want a different marriage with you though. And fortunately I have a husband who's willing to do that, but it's like this, the way things are going now, I just can't go that way. I need it to be renewed. Like God help us to renew it. And I guess into the importance of communication. People, I mean, you hear about communication being vital before you even get married, but until you're married, you don't really understand how much. So that whole list thing, we recommend you guys do that. Um, what it's are you very doing? helpful. What I'm talking to the people. Oh, that person, this person, and that person that's oh, watching in this. Oh, thing. <laughs> oh, so you're being cool. Do, okay. <laughs> do do a list if you. I mean, you, it's important to to communicate what you need and what is working or not working in your relationship, in your marriage, especially. Mm -hmm. Check in with each other. Yeah, because even if you love each other you will just go through different seasons of life where things just change and you need things to be different so like you said just keep reevaluating and checking in i'm paraphrasing what you're saying um naomi do you ever doubt if god will do it for you like you may believe that he'll he can do things for other people but how come you can't believe that he'll do it for you and how do you overcome that i think the only times i've ever doubted things is when things were kind of slow for me I have a good example too, in high school. Girl, senior year, like I said in When God Changes Your Dreams, I was like, I'm gonna go to a great school, I'm probably gonna go out of state, I'm gonna have room and board covered, scholarships, things are gonna be cool because I'm a great student, I got good grades. And there was this other girl where I feel like every scholarship, every coin they had, went to her and I was like she's getting everything like she's basically getting a full ride scholarships on top of that all these awards all these honors and I just felt like how is how is it that we're doing the same things and getting way different results I think when it just seemed like everything was falling apart I'm like how come God will do this for other people but he won't do it for me everybody's getting promoted and I'm not everybody's getting married and I'm not everybody's having kids and I'm not and it just seems like why won't he do it for me but I think timing is a big thing and also if he's not if you're not meant to get that particular thing it may never come so you have to say God if this isn't even for me remove that desire he'll make it clear and be like that's just not for you right now that's just not for you ever but these are things I have just follow me over here so I think just overcoming that is knowing that God is good and he has a plan and just asking him like what is your plan for me though so I think it's not a matter of like oh overcoming will he do it for you but just like knowing what it is that he wants to do for you realizing his desires for you and that only comes with having a very close relationship and an intimate you know communication with God so you have to be in the Bible you have to be prayerful you need to be surrounding yourself with the right people and being careful what you watch what you listen to and what environments you're putting yourself into just submerse yourself you know in God's presence and you'll see a difference I think all right I did have something to add to that point comparison is from the devil <laughs> People are not our standard. Like we are our own individual standards. Mm -hmm. God brings us up specifically for whatever purposes he has for each of us. And someone else doing whatever they're doing has little to do with what my purpose or my standard should be. Similar to Tia's example, I have an example of my, of my own. So I've been doing sports art for a while, working with celebrities. Oh, no. <laughs> and it seems like a lot of the projects I do directly with the clients, like, oh, hey, I did this video for you, music video. 
you would think I directed this crazy video that's animated that they would post it. They didn't do anything with it. <laughs> and it never was released. Doing like personal contracted paintings with pro athletes and then they never post anything mm -hmm. about it. And then there's other artists who are younger, they're just starting out and then they're getting like liked and tagged <laughs> and shared uh, with all these like main major players even players that I've worked with and talked mm -hmm. with before so it's like it's easy to get into the comparison and the uh, greed not greed but the um, envy um, spirit for that why do I care and oftentimes when someone else's success has happened we don't know what they went through uh -huh. and they don't, we don't know where they've been through or what they need or what they need or even where we're going so mm -hmm. if I'm so upset by someone else getting a quicker blessing or quicker success by world standards I can miss out on something that I'm supposed to do or something that I'm supposed to receive mm -hmm. or be a part of Jasmine Adrian says do you guys always pray and fast together or do you do it alone sometimes how do you guys resolve problems we don't always pray together we pray together every day but mm -hmm. there are times where we pray on our own we used to fast together when we first got married because i've been fasting um every monday for like Probably what is 15, it 15 years something like that every monday and then she started doing it when we got married and but recently she realized that was something that would god put on my heart to do yeah i did it because i thought i should since we were married and then god was like i never told you to do that <laughs> So. <laughs> so I still fast on uh, like every week, um, but she doesn't do that with me um, anymore. And how we resolve problems, prayer and seeking the Lord is like one of the first things we always um, do to problem solve. Mm -hmm. And we also kind of take account of what have we done in the past and what things haven't we tried. And, and a lot of it is, is really prayer and, is. and discernment yeah. about how God's going to direct a solution to whatever problem we have. Yeah. Because if it's a problem, like a problem in life, it's like, God, what do we do about this? But if it's like a problem with each other or like a disagreement or uh, different ways of doing things, it is like a conversation. Are you shining light? Okay. Is that me? Yeah, it is like a conversation that we need to have where it's like, okay, well, why do you, why do you want to do it this way? Um, what are the benefits of that? And just kind of coming to a resolution of like this, this may be the best way. Or even if we've had disagreements where I'm like, I for sure feel like God is telling me something different than you and I'll just go to God and be like, God, if this is of you, you need to tell Jerome. Maybe he doesn't hear it from me for a reason. I don't know. You may be healing something in him or vice versa. So it is like if we can't do it together, we'll just go to God and just say like, I put it in your hands. <laughs> like it's just, it's up to you now, God. And usually very quickly, we'll just be like, oh yeah, I prayed about it and God told me the same thing he told you or um, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So this one is Vanilla Fly and it's please talk about your single season and we have talked about it if there's anything that i would add um i would say this being single it's just as much a privilege and an honor and responsibility as being married and something that i think people don't think about marriage is that this is a mission field this is an area to help and uplift god's kingdom this is two people joining together for a common you know purpose beginning a new legacy and a new family line and when you think of it as a responsibility you're not going to say this will solve my problems or i just won't be alone anymore because you're going to have a whole whole new set of things that you have to work through and deal with and be responsible for so like having a pet like having a kid like having a job anything that you get is a new responsibility and it's not something that you need to rush into it's something you need to be prayerful about because really this is about what god wants to do through the both of you together and when you're thinking about it that way i think it, it takes it off of this pedestal of you know desires and puts it puts it in i guess the right category and perspective where you're just like okay i can wait for that and i want to be prepared for that job i want to be prepared for that position and not rush into it and know that it's not going to fix anything you know in your life it's it's going to add to it but it takes work i mean my single season i talked a lot about it in the purity video mm -hmm. um so if you guys want to look at that you could see it but in, in terms of I kind of see it now as kind of a trial period. If you're thinking about a career, it's like the schooling part where you're yeah. you're learning and it's getting married isn't solving whatever hangups you have while you're single. I had to mature a lot with my myself, <laughs> my relationship with God, with my career, mm -hmm. with my 
family dynamics. I think all of us are going through a period of refining and growing and you want to do as much as that as you can before you add someone to your life and share yes. a life with them. Juju, thoughts regarding developing feelings for unbeliever. How to go about it even if we are just platonic. Very hot button topic with a lot of people out there uh, about um, dating or seeing a, a non-believer. The Bible does talk about not being unequally yoked. I did take that scripture to heart mm -hmm. because missionary dating is a, kind of a dangerous proposition. Because a lot of people go into it thinking, yeah, it's gonna be great because it's a way to save somebody. But the two, there are two fundamental flaws in that thinking is one, you're connecting with someone that's not connected with God. Sure, you can pour into them, but they might actually be pouring into you things that are contrary to Mm -hmm. a walk a relationship with the Lord even though there's a there's a line people use that you may be the only Jesus that people see ever see so you you should walk as Christ did and he's our example but in a relationship like that where you're missionary dating it's tough to have that position because they may see you as the only reason why they become a Christian yeah. like I'm just gonna get saved and go to church with you as a not even necessarily in their eyes as a farce but it's just something to do to stay with you mm -hmm. so that conversion needs to be genuine and personal for them that person can get saved without you being in a relationship with them and if God has mm -hmm. you guys set apart for each other then I believe that he will come to know God without you having to be with him and, and basically sacrifice or compromise your own values and your own beliefs. Some yeah. people aren't hard line on that but I, for me personally I do feel like that's important um, because because if he never comes along then then you like what do you what do you do with that kind of relationship mm -hmm. like are you just gonna break it off then or are you guys too far into it and too yeah. much feeling is connected so I would just um, caution on anyone that's wanting to to seek a relationship with someone who doesn't share the same faith and they're not believers if you're praying for someone to receive God that you may have feelings for it's really just because you want them to know God whether or not you end up in a relationship or not God will bring you to the right person mm -hmm. so if that never works out then he has someone better for you and I have a whole video about should a Christian date a non-believer so I'll link that or put it in a card or something but yeah I had a lot to say about that too and if you do pray for them also pray for the right man to come and disciple them I do believe women should disciple women men should disciple men because it could be a thing where someone's like you saved my life I love you and they idolize you and then they end up it just gets too complicated and God isn't able to be glorified because there's a lot of distractions there mm -hmm. So I will go on the next one. This one is by Mary Amadi. What's the best method of parenting you found is best for your baby girl? You guys are great new subscriber. You're so sweet, thank you. So the best method, this is interesting because there's a style called attachment parenting. There's a lot of people who say like, oh, kids are born to be manipulators. That's why they cry. You shouldn't meet their needs because they gotta learn to be independent. It's like, when my daughter was a baby, she's a baby. Like she'll learn as she needs to, I guess what kind of independence, you know, she's gonna have. But as a baby, as a toddler, it's like meet their needs when they need them, you know, in a healthy way, they should not become your idol. They should not become your number one priority. Like people say, I don't agree with that. God is number one, your spouse is number two. Kids are number three, extended family, blah, blah, it goes from there. But I believe it's just very love-centered, God-centered, training them up in the way they should go and staying prayerful because God knows their individual personalities and who they're going to be. So he's the one who could tell you, this is how they need discipline. This is how they need love. This is how they need encouragement. This is how they need training and focus and everything like that. But basically, just we're wanting to just train her up in the ways of the Lord. That's why we pray with her. And we tell her about Jesus all the time. And she's listening to sermons while we're listening to them and we're talking about you know what God is doing in our lives and it's just amazing to see that flourish so if anything my parenting style is Jesus style <laughs> Jesus number one style God is in our midst style and then from there if you would call it a, a thing it'd be attachment parenting it's just like I meet her needs I make sure she feels loved that's just my viewpoint on what's worked for us though I agree my style is Jesus style as well um, I think you covered it Next question is another hot button oh, no. topic. This is from Anna E. Can you explain Bible speaking in tongues? How and when have you done it or been around it? Also, I'm thankful I found your channel has challenged me to think more deep heart. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, so for me personally, um, there are different views um, within the church, within um, 
the body of Christ about speaking in tongues. When I look at scripture and how I interpret it, uh, I think there is a certain gift of someone who can speak in tongues and have interpretation. I don't necessarily think that's everybody. General speaking that covers everybody as the body of Christ is the ability to be able to speak in tongues as like a prayer language, mm -hmm. to edify yourself. The Bible talks about um, when you don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit will help you to mm -hmm. utter, have utterance where it's something that you don't understand. It's a language where basically your spirit is just speaking to God and speaking to a situation. With that, I feel like we, as believers, have the ability to speak in tongues as a way to edify ourselves, with the Bible, like the Bible says, and to speak to God. Though we may not even understand it, I think that's the application for it. Yeah. To, a, to another extent, there may be other applications within certain churches that have someone who's a prophet who has the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation of yeah. tongues. I agree. If it's by yourself, we speak in tongues on a daily basis. But if it's in a group, I wouldn't go and speak in tongues over a group. Um, there needs to be an interpreter according to the Bible. But there is a, we'll have to say like down here where the where it is in the Bible that it talks about speaking in tongues, prophecy, edification, evangelism, teaching, pastoring, all mm -hmm. that stuff. So those are important things. And the Bible even says like to ask for gifts. And I did when I was a teenager, I asked to speak in tongues and I'm gonna share that whole testimony. So I'm glad you brought it up about the purpose of tongues and how I even got the gift of speaking in tongues. But I think it is alive and well. I think it's necessary now. I think all of the gifts, healing, all of that stuff should be still used um, mm -hmm. because Jesus is still working in us. God is still real. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is alive and well. So we still, we still do that. Very good. This is the last question. It just made the cutoff, barely. Okay. So I've watched your video on long distance. This is from Amy Paul. I've watched your video on long distance. What's your advice when your significant other is having doubts about how long distance will work out? He's moving about one and a half hours away and is questioning if that would be too hard for him because he wants me to be right there with him. Any words of wisdom as to what I can say for him for encouragement that long distance can work for us? First and foremost, has God told you that this is your husband? Because if you're having any type of relationship, I don't care if they live down the street, there may be doubts that come up. Like, how are we gonna make this work? Is this really the person for me? You know, if we don't know that God said, yes, you have my blessing. This is the marriage that you have. So I wouldn't say that there's any way to really comfort him besides if God were to tell you or if he already told you, hey, God said that we're supposed to be together. He's going to make a way. He's going to get us through this because I have heard of Christian couples that started off in the same state and then one went away to school or something and they for two years you know flew back and forth and it's hard it's very very difficult and that's why i would only do it if the lord said that you should but i'd say there's literally no way to assure him if this is not someone god said is your husband so i know that that may be hard to hear if god didn't say that or if in the inside you know that he's not the one it's better to let something go to make room for who god has for you or to just ask god give me a sign give me confirmation that he's the one so that we can both before he even moves away know like hey we're in this for the long haul we're getting married so these are this is just a conversation you need to give to God first and then you can decide are you supposed to move on and um, is he not the one for you or it, or do you guys stick it out and make sure that you do what it takes to keep the relationship thriving that's what I would say that's good that's what I said that's what I would say and I said <laughs> I said it Good. You can close us out in prayer and then we'll <laughs> sign off. All right. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to, to pour into lives of these people. We know that you have a great purpose for um, marriage and for relationships uh, for all your children. And for us, what we've been through, uh, we know that you are able to use anything to to be a, a lesson and something that can be uh, inspirational and edifying for someone else and we just want our marriage our relationship our careers to be that lord may people that see this have wisdom poured into them to know that you care for them and that you want the best for them uh, their relationship their relationship with you first and your their relationship with their significant other, Lord, uh, their husband or their wife, whether they're in it already or leading to it, Lord, we just pray your blessing over them and that you prepare each of them for it. Any mistakes that we've run into, 
we always pray that other people won't run into those same things. Maybe words that we say can help them to skip any hardship or, or trials, Lord, but help them to have their best possible relationship in you and have your your topmost, your best plan for their life uh, manifested to the fullness, Lord. We pray your blessing over them and help this video to go out and to, to minister and bless those who see it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you guys for joining us and for sending in these amazing questions. I think they're just really great conversation starters and just things to really ponder on. I hope that we did answer them though and give you something to move forward with. And thanks again for supporting us and supporting this channel. It's really exciting to grow with you. And if you haven't already joined the family, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when we post, turn on the notifications. We also do the community tab. We'll post like behind the scenes pictures and things like this, which are like polls or or ask us questions kind of a thing. So thank you again for being really dedicated and engaged people in our lives. And we will see you in our next video. <laughs> Bye. What did you just do? This is how the audio is. This is what it sounds like. But what if I talk? I what does that sound like? Oh, you got lipstick on your teeth. Cool. Ah. <laughs> deet, deet. Uh and that's a very why there's the light coming in like that it's off my phone oh was yeah. it? okay i was like we're in the sun because it was really getting sunshine on his arms i was getting tan over there. and then i was like um what was i like what how the um how the uh what is the term <laughs> how how do you say the <laughs> Lamour in Christ now has apparel. Please check the description box for more information on how to purchase. If you like what you see here, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out our previous uploads. See you next time.